Peace and blessings, everybody. It's uh, Friday, February the 22nd, the year 2019. I just received approval from Janet Thompson to copy and mirror her video to YouTube. I encourage you to do the same. The word needs to get out to everyone regarding the arrest of our Christian brother, Matt Thompson, who's in jail tonight. But I can tell you, in being an activist over the past few years, that there's certain events that are watershed moments. The murder of Lavoy Finicum is a watershed moment. Uh, there was an instance in Olsom Park in Texas where C.J. Grisham was tased and tackled and arrested for open carrying a firearm. The very next weekend after they did that to C.J. Grisham, over 600 well-armed Texans walked around the police station to make a strong point to those police officers that we will not tolerate you tasing, tackling, and arresting C.J. Grisham for exercising his Second Amendment right to carry a firearm. I believe that this event that we're seeing right now with the arrest of Matt Thompson for simply trying to visit his friend Jeffrey Winehouse, both of which are innocent, Matt Thompson and Jeffrey Winehouse, is and could be a watershed moment. I believe that we need to rally around Matt Thompson, we need to rally around Jeffrey Winehouse, and 600 people need to send a very strong message to that prison, that they will not keep Jeffrey Winehouse in the hole, we believe he's innocent, and we demand that this illegal criminal justice system set Jeffrey Winehouse free and Matt Thompson free. And... Uh, from my experience, you don't get justice by going to court. Our court systems are failing us in America. The criminal justice system in America, I have lost all faith in that system. And the only way that we can have justice in this police state that we now find ourselves is we've got to organize. We've got to organize and rally behind our political prisoners and support our innocent brothers and sisters that have been unjustly incarcerated. And you say, well, we always have our differences and all we do is argue all the time and it's so hard to organize. The Bible gives us the recipe for unity. If Christ be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Let's give glory to God. Let's rally behind Matt Thompson. Let's rally behind Jeffrey Winehouse. What they did today to Matt Thompson, a strong, strong message needs to be sent to that prison and that police force that we will not tolerate uh, what they did to Matt Thompson. It can't be said in a more stronger language. But here's Matt Thompson's wife, Janet. She's a very well-spoken, very well-informed, very impassioned speaker. Please listen very carefully to the recounting of what happened to Matt Thompson today. Okay, I have never done a Facebook live post before, and I'm just going to start telling this story. Um, don't even know where to begin. Jeff Winehouse is also known as Bulletin Man, and he, in, se in September of 2012, Jeff was... The, the highway patrol in Missouri attempted to murder him. And after he was shot twice in the head and twice in the chest by Henry Folsom, who was a Missouri highway patrolman, after they had illegally confiscated his computers that he used to make these bulletins that were trying to expose corruption in Franklin County, Missouri and, and its surrounds. So... After Jeff recovered, and, and Jeff was praying to God on his way to get his computers back. That was the, the pretense that they used in order to get Jeff to an MFA station in Union, Missouri. And Jeff prayed to God and said, whatever they have in mind, please protect us. Please protect me. Please let it not be effective. It worked. Imagine being shot twice in the head and twice in the chest. And... You survive. And he did, I believe, by the grace of God. Approximately November, that was in September, approximately November 
they arrest Jeff and charge him with attacking the police officers. Jeff was tried and convicted and sentenced to 30 years in prison, and he's sitting in Bonterre, Missouri, in a prison in Bonterre. He had a video watch on at the time, and that shows that he never threatened the police. There were two FBI agents on site. Both of them were deposed and said that Jeff, Jeff open carried. He had a gun on his left hip, but he, um, they deposed that Jeff had never reached for his weapon within 13 seconds of Jeff exiting his car, supposedly to get his computers back. He was on the ground laying in his own blood. So when we found out about the case, now living in Missouri, when we found out about Jeff's situation, we both applied to be able to visit Jeff in prison. And last October, we we had put our applications in many weeks before, and it turned out that he was only allowed, like he has a list of approved visitors, and he was only allowed to have one of us. So Matt um, went ahead and, and did the visitation with Jeff. And Matt's been going down regularly. It's about a two hour and 45 minute drive from Columbia, where we live. And Matt goes down there and visits Jeff regularly. Visiting hours, visiting days are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Matt usually goes down on a Friday or Saturday. All of that's backstory. So two Fridays ago, Matt went down to Bonterre to see Jeff, and they told Matt that he couldn't see him because they had put Jeff in the hole. Now Jeff has been a model prisoner. He's a he's a really good guy, and no nobody would tell Matt why he's in the hole and Matt was not allowed to see him. So two weeks down the track, Matt's been trying to call, trying to find out what's going on, and hasn't got any answers. There are no politicians who will touch it. There is nobody, the Attorney General, nobody's responsible for anything. So today, Matt left home at 5.30 to drive down to Bonterre, and he went to the prison, and they told him that Jeff was still in the hole. Now, Jeff's been in for 14 days. We don't know if Jeff is even alive. He's been in the hole for 14 days. He has not been able to talk to his attorney. His attorney has not been able to talk to him. He has not been in, in contact with family or friends. And Matt physically went down there today to, to try to figure out what was going on. And... The prison told him he couldn't see. I, I've, I've just spoken to Matt. The prison told him that he couldn't see Jeff and he couldn't know why Jeff was in the hole. And the, finally, Matt said, I'm not going to leave until I know, until I have some answers. And he's standing for Jeff. He's standing for somebody who can't stand for himself. And Matt said, I want to speak to the warden. And finally the warden came out. And Matt said this evening on the phone, he said, it was incredible. It's like, they, it's like they're letting you know that they're going to lie and they're laughing in your face saying, what are you going to do about it? Anyway, the warden told him that he needed to leave. And Matt said, I want to know, I want to know how Jeff is and why he is in the hole. Anyway, the warden said he was going to call the Bonterre police. Bonterre is B-O-N-N-E-T-E-R-R-E, -E -E, Bonterre, Missouri. It's a state-run um, prison. And anyway, Matt left, and, and he said he got to the edge of the property of the prison, and a guy chased him out there and, and stopped him and said, you haven't left fast enough. And he said, I'm just going to let you off with a warning. So... At that point, I'm teaching school. At that point, uh, Matt texted me and said, I just about got arrested, but I didn't. I don't think they'll ever let me see Jeff Winehouse again. And his lawyer is as bad as the warden. And uh, so anyway, I don't know, about an hour later or so, uh, Matt was on the phone with... Um, Valerie Winehouse, and by the way, that's who Jeff was on the phone to when he had his, he was on the phone to Valerie when he was shot, 
and uh, he went to a Hardee's and Matt went to a Hardee's and he was on the phone to Valerie and the police showed up and I guess they showed up in mass and he was telling he was about to tell it to me on the phone this evening and he stopped and he said I'll have to tell you about it later so I don't know who was there and anyway they arrested Matt and they're holding him in the St. Francis County Jail and the Bon Terra City Police are the ones that arrested him and apparently there's only one jail in in the county so it wasn't the county people that arrested him it was it was the city but now he's being held at the St. Francis County Jail his suburban was parked at Hardee's and I found out today that they've they've um, towed it which was totally unnecessary um, I asked Matt if they hurt him when they arrested him and he said um, oh, not not really. He said they put those handcuffs on tight and then they put you in the back seat and it's very uncomfortable, but he says, no big deal. And I said, have they fed you? And he said, yeah, they fed me a bologna sandwich, but he said, this is just, they do lots of little things to show that they're in charge. And he says, so they fed me a bologna sandwich, but they put water on the bread. They made the bread wet. So, um, Anyway, Valerie is the one that called me at school, called me out of my class and and let me know that they had arrested him. He was on the phone with her when they did and she said, I heard him say, what are you arresting me for? What are you charging me with? And, and Matt said, I, they won't tell me what they're charging me with. And then the phone, they hung up, the phone went dead. So anyway, Valerie called me and I said, no, I had a text from him that said, he, he, he wasn't arrested and she said no this is since then so they chased him down they went to the Hardee's and chased him down after after he had left and so when I called down there um, they they told me that he was charged with harassment and trespass and then bond was set at seventy five hundred dollars but I don't know how it all works but he was he was gonna get out um, within 24 hours anyway so we we don't have you know it's just better to wait the 24 hours rather than spending even you know anyway I know how it works but we don't have $7,500 so anyway I there are lots of good people in the world a lot of good people in the world who don't understand that we are living in a police state. And Jeff Winehouse is in prison for 30 years, and Schaefer Cox is in prison for almost 27 years, and there are lots of other innocent men in prison who hurt anyone. And I know that the question, the question good people ask, people don't believe this, people don't believe that our situation in the United States of America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the land of the free, this cannot happen. And Jeff Winehouse must have done something wrong. Schaefer Cox must have done something wrong. Otherwise, that wouldn't happen. Not, not in America. It, it's happening, people. And, and my husband was arrested today for trying to stand up for a person who can't stand for himself and we can all keep living our happy lives we can all keep ignoring what's going on but I'm telling you it's going on and it's gonna happen just bit by bit by bit and our kids are gonna end up in the incinerator we keep saying oh just comply as long as you do what the police tell you to do it's all fine guys I am NOT Pro police. I am not pro Black Lives Matter. Every individual case has its merits and it should be measured on by its merits. But we have a problem in this country. And until good people are willing to open their eyes to reality, to the fact that we have political prisoners in the United States of America, we've got a problem. We have to stand. And and I do believe that if you are a member of government, if you are a member of a police force, and I know we've had, we've had good men 
good police officers that have been killed because they were about to testify against their fellow police officers. I know, I know how hard it is, and I know about having to provide for a family and wanting to just go along to get along so you can keep your life going. I understand. I get it. But we're headed for trouble. And until good people are willing to stand, we're in trouble.